Hey everyone, you know ancient Egypt was a fascinating civilization that continues to inspire, enlighten, and puzzle us to this day. Archaeologists are constantly digging up new artifacts and learning new things about this ancient civilization. So join me for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the most amazing discoveries in Egypt. Number 15. The Rosetta Stone Okay, at first glance, the Rosetta Stone is simply a slab of ancient stone with a whole lot of strange writing on it. But don't let that mundane appearance fool you. The Rosetta Stone is one of the most valuable artifacts ever discovered from ancient Egypt. The stone was found in 1799 and it paved the way for our modern understanding of hieroglyphics. Before we found the stone, we had no idea what all those strange and ancient symbols meant. But the Rosetta Stone held a key, ancient Greek. You see, the stone had a decree about King Ptolemy inscribed into it, which is not that interesting in and of itself, but the decree was repeated three times on the stone in three different languages. The first is hieroglyphs, which was on the stone to be read by the priests. We couldn't make sense of these hieroglyphs, though. The second was demotic, which was what the average person read, and the third was ancient Greek. The Greek would have been read by the administrators, and it was a language that was understood at the time of the stone's discovery. So historians used that knowledge of ancient Greek and applied it to the hieroglyphs, and voila, the door to the wild and wonderful world of hieroglyphs swung open. Today, the Rosetta Stone is on display at the British Museum because it continues to be, inarguably, one of the most valuable and amazing discoveries from Egypt. Number 14. The Valley of the Golden Mummies yeah, it can be hard to believe that we're still digging up valuable relics from a civilization that built its empire thousands of years ago, but we are, and the Valley of the Golden Mummies is proof of that. The Valley of the Golden Mummies was only discovered in 1996, and Zahi Hawass was responsible for bringing this massive burial site from the dredges of the dark to the light of the public eye. The mummies found there are not, of course, the first mummies found. We've been discovering ancient Egyptian mummies for hundreds of years, but they are some of the oldest and contain the largest collection of mummies ever found at one site. This mother load of mummies has an estimated 10,000 mummies, although excavation is still underway. These mummies are around 2,000 years old, and every one of them is uniquely clothed and decorated, even though they fall into one of four styles. One style is covered in linen, one in cartonnage, a material of papyrus covered in plaster. One was placed in a pottery coffin, and one style features both a gilded mask and a gilded waistcoat. The mummies all have artifacts with them, varying from wine jars to food trays to assorted coins and jewelry. Needless to say, the Valley of the Golden Mummies is a pretty lavish haul, as the mummies are stunningly decorated and offer up some pretty important insights into the people who lived there 2,000 years ago. Number 13. The Abydos Carvings at the Temple of Seti I Egyptologists have been developing a pretty strong hold of hieroglyphics, but with centuries of hard work and deciphering under their belts, every once in a while something appears from Egypt that baffles them. This is the case with the strange hieroglyphics that adorn the walls at the Temple of Seti I. The temple is located in the sacred site of Abydos, which is near al Bayana on the west bank of the Nile. The city covers an area of about three square miles and is considered to be one of the most important archaeological sites in Egypt because it was originally a necropolis for Egyptian royalty and then a major pilgrimage destination. The Temple of Seti I was built for the famous king who was the son of Ramses I and ruled from about 1290 BC to 1270 BC. The temple was discovered in the early 1900s and is one of the most spectacularly built temples in that region. And this temple has become famous because of something called the Abydos Carvings. Also called the Helicopter Hieroglyphics, the carvings depict some pretty strange stuff. For example, some of the carvings bear an uncanny resemblance to things like helicopters, modern-day vehicles, fighter jets, and even spaceships. But wait a minute, how did a civilization that lives thousands of years ago carve pictures of things that weren't invented yet? Well, Egyptologists are asking that same question. Is this proof that ancient Egyptians had some sort of contact with UFOs? Some people believe it is, others not so much, but in any case, the carvings are real, and a concrete explanation for the Abydos carvings continues to be a source of contention in the archaeological world. Number 12. Nefertiti Bust On December 6, 1912, Egyptologists received an early Christmas present when the German Oriental Society, led by Ludwig Bochart, found the Nefertiti Bust in Amarna, Egypt. 
Nefertiti was the royal wife of the pharaoh Akhenaten, and they both ruled during what some consider to be the wealthiest period of ancient Egyptian history. A woman of many names, Nefertiti was also known as the Lady of Grace, the Sweet Love, the Great of Praises, and the Lady of All Women. So, she was a pretty big deal at the time. In fact, her name is actually a sentence that means, the beautiful one has come. So when her bust was discovered, it quickly became a symbol of ancient Egyptian feminine beauty. The bust itself was created in 1345 BC and is made of limestone that's been coated in paint and stucco. It weighs about 44 pounds and is 19 inches high. Since its discovery, the Nefertiti bust has gone on to become one of the most copied works of ancient Egypt. The bust is currently on display in a museum in Berlin, Germany, but since the bust is so iconic, there's no need to go to the museum to see it. There's plenty of pics and images on Nefertiti's bust on the internet, as well as replicas of it in various works of art. Number 11. The Nabta Playa Stone Circle You've likely heard of Stonehenge before, and if you haven't, then perhaps you've been living under a stone wall all these years. Stonehenge is arguably one of the most famous, most studied, and most iconic relics of the past. Why? Because it's shrouded in mystery, and anything historic that doesn't have a concrete explanation seems to trigger a fascination response in us. But did you know that Stonehenge is not the only unexplained ancient circle of rocks out there? In fact, Stonehenge isn't even the oldest. That title goes to the Nabta Playa Stone Circle, which is brought to us by, you guessed it, Egypt. The Nabta Playa Stone Circle was discovered in 1973, which is strange since it's located about 700 miles from the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid of Giza, of course, is a highly visited tourist destination, so it seems a little strange that no one stumbled upon this ancient stone structure before. The Nabta Playa Stone Circle is around 7,000 years old, so it's older than Stonehenge, which is about 5,000 years old. Now, its actual purpose isn't fully known, but most historians agree that it was likely some sort of astronomical observatory, and as such, the Nabta Playa Stone Circle is often called the world's first astronomical site. Was this mankind's first attempt to connect with the stars? Possibly? Maybe? Likely? Or did it have a completely different use we're not aware of? Well, maybe, because that's the thing about ancient Egypt. So much of what we think we know are actually just theories. Highly plausible theories with some facts to support them, but still theories nonetheless. Number 10. The Khufu Ship If you've ever tackled one of those puzzles that has hundreds or even thousands of pieces, then you can begin to understand the magnificence that is the Khufu Ship. This Khufu ship is currently one of the oldest and one of the largest ships we have from antiquity. The ship was built for the pharaoh Khufu sometime around 4500 BC. It's 143 feet long and about 19 and a half feet wide, and although we don't know for sure, it was likely built as a ritual vessel. It's known as a solar barge. The Khufu ship was probably contrasted to carry the sun god Ra and the resurrected pharaoh Khufu across the heavens. But it appears that the ship had physical contact with water at some point, so some historians believe that it may have carried the pharaoh's dead body from Memphis, where he lived, to the Pyramid of Giza, where he was put. The discovery of the ship is important, since it's the biggest ship we have from antiquity, and the ship is in remarkable shape. But the shape of the ship is not the only remarkable part. When the ship was discovered, it was found in pieces, thousands of pieces, and those pieces were spread out about five separate pits. The ship was found by accident in 1954 during a dig. From there, a famous Egyptian restorer by the name of Yusef Mustafa stepped in to put the ship back together. It took him 14 years, 14 years to reconstruct the ship. And needless to say, unlike that thousand-piece puzzle that I left abandoned on the dining room table for sheer frustration, Mustafa couldn't even start with the edge pieces. If there's an award for the best puzzle assembler that ever lived, please give it to this man. Number 9. The Tomb of King Tut So, King Tut's pretty famous in our world, but he actually wasn't an overly significant king by historical standards. The discovery of his tomb, however, was. The Tomb of King Tutankhamun was found in 1922 by Howard Carter. It was found in the Valley of the Kings, and the reason it's so amazing is that King Tut's tomb is the only royal burial that's been found fully intact. For this reason, historians were able to learn a lot of the tombs of ancient Egyptian kings. First of all, King Tut was mummified and very well preserved, so they could study that. But his tomb also contained a lot of riches. These were rooms full of chairs, paintings, statues, and of course, gold jewelry. They even found model boats in the rooms. 
King Tut's tomb, then, was a veritable warehouse of ancient Egyptian artifacts containing more than 5,000 different well-preserved items. Before this discovery, historians could only piece together what might have been in a king's tomb based on its bits and pieces, but King Tut's tomb gave them a much more complete understanding of a tomb. As such, King Tut's tomb has also been called one of the most important archaeological finds of ancient Egypt and one of the most significant archaeological finds of the 1900s across all archaeological finds. Number 8. The Sakora Bird It's just a tiny bird made of sycamore wood. How much controversy can one little bird cause? Well, a lot, apparently. The Sakora Bird was discovered in a tomb in Sakora in 1898. It seems innocuous enough, but this little bird is anything but. The Sakura bird could have been a child's toy. It could have been some sort of ceremonial object. It could have been a representation of a god or goddess. Or it could have been a model of a flying machine. It should go without saying that it's really the last possibility that's caused so much stir. And some ancient Egyptian historians believe that the Sakura bird is proof that the ancient Egyptians understood, at the very least, some things about aviation. Others believe the bird proves they knew a lot, and of course some believe the bird proves nothing of the sort. The bird dates back to around 200 BCE, and it has a wingspan of about 7.1 inches. It's also known as the Saqqara Glider. This strange artifact is sometimes called an out-of-place artifact. It looks like a bird, yes, but it also looks a lot like a model glider. Perhaps one day someone will be able to prove something about this unusual artifact. In the meantime, it remains grounded and on display at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, where it continues to both fascinate, spark, and delight the imaginations of theorists who side on the ancient Egyptian aviation wing of things. Number 7. The Narmer Palette the physical appearance of the Narmer Palette might not excite every palette, but it certainly excited historians. The palette is also known as the Great Hieronkonpolis Palette. This amazing little relic has some of the earliest hieroglyphics ever found on an artifact. And given how important hieroglyphics are to ancient Egyptian studies, finding some of the oldest ones was a surefire cause for celebration amongst Egyptologists. This is a cosmetic palette, and on one side of the palette is the King Narmer with a white crown. On the other side of the palette, though, he's wearing a red crown. This is important because the white crown depicts southern Egypt and the red depicts northern Egypt. As such, it's believed that the palette is showing the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt into the kingdom of two lands under the Divine King. So the importance of the palette is really both its age and in what it's depicting. The palette was discovered in 1897, and it's on display at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. This palette was made sometime between 3200 and 3000 BC, and it's in very good condition given its age. Number 6. Canopic Jars The mummification process of ancient Egypt has always been a source of fascination. Mummies have appeared in countless movies, books, and TV shows. Monsters wrapped in fringe, decaying bandages are the source of many a Halloween fright night. But of course, the mummies we've created to scare, fright, and delight are a far cry from the actual mummies of ancient Egypt. Which is where canopic jars come in. Canopic jars are an integral part of the mummification process, well, because they held the organs. Through their discovery, historians learned that the ancient Egyptians used four different jars, one for the liver, one for the intestines, one for the stomach, and one for lungs. And furthermore, each type of jar was fashioned after a specific god. God Hapi held the lungs, God Duatutef held the stomach, God Imseti held the liver, and God Kebesunef held the intestines. The jars were supposed to preserve the owner's organs for the afterlife. And these jars have been found in many famous tombs, even King Tut's tomb, and they are important ceremonial artifacts from ancient Egypt. Number 5. The Unfinished Obelisk If you don't know what an obelisk is, don't worry, you're about to find out. Obelisks were ancient monuments that were built to honor various gods, as well as to represent the immortality of the pharaohs. Given this, obelisks were a very important part of ancient Egyptian culture. Historians often look to religious objects to better understand religions of the past, and obelisks are no exception. However, because this one is incomplete, it's not so much the religious importance of the object as it is the construction of it. Now, finding any obelisk in decent condition is important, but when it comes to important obelisks, none are as important as the unfinished obelisk. 
This one is the largest known ancient obelisk in the world, and it's in the northern region of Egypt in the quarries of Aswan, and it's around 3,500 years old. The obelisk, if finished, would have been 137 feet tall, which is a third larger than the next largest obelisk. It also would have weighed in at 1,200 tons. The obelisk was carved out of bedrock, but for some reason it was abandoned before it was finished, hence the unfinished part of its name. Historians believe it was abandoned because there's a crack in the granite, and apparently cracked granite does not befit a god nor a king. Because it was abandoned, the bottom side of the obelisk is still connected to the bedrock, and while its size is amazing, the obelisk also offers historians something else, rare insight into the stoneworking techniques of ancient Egyptians. This obelisk has stood the test of time, and many of its original marks are still visible. Number 4. The Dendera Light Following along the lines of the Saqqara bird and the Abydos carvings, the Dendera light is another amazing and highly controversial discovery from Egypt. In fact, it's so controversial it's been called one of the most controversial finds from ancient Egypt to date. The Dendera light is a drawing, and an ancient one at that. It's found on a stone relief at the Hathor Temple in the Upper Egyptian Temple Complex of Dendera. As you can see from the pictures, the drawing looks like a man holding up a light bulb. Yeah, this is problematic, of course, because electricity wasn't invented yet, and neither were light bulbs. Some people have interpreted the drawing to be a battery of some sort, but that's also problematic because, no, batteries weren't invented yet either. In all fairness, it's been pointed out that it could very possibly be a picture of a snake or a pillar or a lotus flower or something else much more mundane. But the fact that it looks an awful lot like a light bulb and that it looks like there's some sort of cord attached to it that leads to some sort of power source has led to a lot of fringe theories and conspiracies, of course. Did the ancient Egyptians have electricity? Is that what this is? A picture that proves that? Well, no one has proven it is, but no one has proven it isn't. Number 3. The Lost Golden City of Aten The Lost Golden City of Aten may sound like some sort of joke at first. After all, how do you lose a city? But this amazing discovery in Egypt is certainly no joke. The Golden City of Aten is a 3,000-year-old city that sat dormant and undiscovered for thousands of years. That is, until Egyptologist Sahi Hawass found the long-lost city in 2021. The discovery of the city was preceded by a mortuary temple, which was found in 2020. The temple was found on the western bank of Luxor in Egypt, and archaeologists had no idea when they found the temple that they were about to unearth what has been called the most significant archaeological find since King Tut's tomb. The city is massive, and the city of Aten was the largest industrial settlement of that area. But somewhere along the lines, the desert winds swept in and buried the city, and the city was long forgotten. The city was a hub of wealth, so historians will be able to piece together a fairly detailed picture of what ancient Egypt was like during this time of high wealth. But this city also holds rooms upon rooms full of ordinary objects, like pottery and tools, so historians will be able to learn more about what average life was like during this era. There have been few finds that can rival the magnitude of this one, considering the in-depth picture it can paint for historians. There's still a lot to unearth in this buried and once lost city, but given the enormity of the city and the wealth of artifacts it holds, it's a good thing they found this lost golden city of Aten, because surely it will prove to be one of the most amazing finds that Egyptologists have ever found. Number 2. The Chambers of the Pyramid of Giza It's not so much the discovery of the Pyramid of Giza that's amazing, but the fact that historians are still discovering things within the pyramid even to this day. With the use of technology, historians are able to send nanorobots into places that haven't been able to be accessed before. For example, they recently discovered a coffer inside one of the pyramid's chambers. The coffer itself is not that exciting, but the coffer is in a room that is completely encased. The coffer itself is in one piece, and there's no way it would have been able to fit through any openings. So this begs the question, how did the coffer get in the room? Or did they build the room around the coffer, and if so, why? And this bizarre coffer that's encased in a room is not the only amazing discovery in the Pyramid of Giza. Underneath the pyramid, archaeologists are discovering tunnels, shafts, and more mysterious chambers. Some of these tunnels and shafts haven't even been explored yet, so who knows what lurks beneath this iconic pyramid. And it doesn't stop there. There's also the Queen Chamber, which is mysteriously empty, but has several tunnels that lead south and north. 
and in the early 2000s, thanks to tiny robots, another chamber was found, this one with red hieroglyphs on the walls, hieroglyphs that are still being deciphered. But most amazingly enough is the shroud of mystery that surrounds new discoveries. According to some sources, most of these new discoveries in the Pyramid of Giza are not being disclosed to the public. But why not? What exactly are they finding in this massive pyramid? It seems like the discoveries just keep on coming. And like so many things in ancient Egypt, it feels like the more we find, the more we find we don't know. Number 1. The Cairo Manuscript Step aside jewels, busts, and massive pyramids with secret chambers and otherworldly artifacts, because I'm giving the top spot on this list of the 15 most amazing discoveries in Egypt to a book. Not just any book, though, obviously. The Cairo Manuscript is the most diverse collection of medieval manuscripts in the world. Boasting more than 400,000 Jewish manuscript fragments, the Cairo Manuscript, or the Cairo Genisa as it's also called, was found in Cairo, Egypt and includes several different languages, like Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew. The manuscript details what life was like during the 10th to the 13th centuries in the Eastern Mediterranean and North Africa regions. But unlike other manuscripts or documents, which often focus on one thing or one aspect of life, the Cairo manuscript is a powerhouse of pretty much everything, from scientific writings to philosophical to mystical, economical, and of course religious. Now, a lot of the manuscript exists in fragments and are incomplete parts of larger stories, but given that there are 400,000 fragments that span all areas of life, culture, art, science, and religion, it's a pretty substantial discovery. Few finds have given historians such a comprehensive idea of what life was like in a particular region as the Cairo manuscripts. And for that, these pages of the past deserve a pretty hefty shout-out. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.